Welcome to your daily Detroit showing what to know and where to go in Southeast Michigan. Coming to you from the Daily Detroit studio at Tech Town, I am Jer Stays, and across the table from me is none other than the excellent Fletcher Sharp. How are you, sir? You know, it's the weather's kind of warming up. I, I like to wear hoodies, so it's kind of hard for me a little bit, but you know, I just got to push through nonetheless. <laughs> the big challenge is, so we have a jam-packed episode for you today going to hit you with a few different things. We're going to have a conversation with an NFL draft prospect from Detroit, Rich Miller Jr., talking about his background growing up here and how it's impacted him going into possibly joining an NFL roster. Really cool conversation. Looking forward to that. We're going to end the show by going to Keyworth, talking about Detroit City FC playing the Michigan Stars in the U.S. Open Cup. But first, Fletcher Sharp, there's some Pistons news that I think some fans are not going to be happy about. Yeah, the Pistons are looking for a new head of basketball operations, which is good. But I think the news people are really hoping to hear is that the Troy Weaver is no longer associated with the Pistons organization, which is not the case. And they're kind of hoping that there'd be a big shift in uh, the basketball side of things. I understand for fiscal reasons. I know some people are upset for basketball reasons. But being bad for one year should not cost Monty Williams his job unless he lost all 82 games. And for Troy Weaver's sake, I keep having fans of the show hit me up and be like, well, you see, he hasn't even won 100 games in five years. And it's like, I don't I don't have a comeback for that. I truly don't. But I do know that building things takes time. And I will say with the Pistons, at least they've had a few incidents where someone's been hurt or something else has gone wrong. If they had just played all together and been flat out bad, I'd be like, for sure. And like, I'm not trying to carry water for Troy Weaver. He's his own man. He has his own plans that are not working well. But like, this is really a last shot for him, I think. I think if they can't get it together this year, at least have like a a decent team, maybe maybe hitting the play in, maybe making the low round playoff, I think he has to go at this point. Monty Williams isn't going anywhere, is he? Because, I mean, we're, we're very invested in that guy. No, he, he has the richest contract in NBA coaching history. And if you cut him after one year, which means you have to, means you have to pay him all of that money, all that really says to me, if I were another coach, is, hey, I can go there and suck for a year or two, but sign a big contract, and they have to pay him. And, like, that sends the wrong message. Like, you have to figure out a way to turn it around. And also, they have to give you a chance to turn it around. They can't just say, well, you had one bad year, dysfunctional roster, Gotta go, man. Like, that's not... It should be more than just that, especially with the price tag you've assigned to him. Fair, fair. All right, let's get to our conversation with Rich Miller Jr. Fletcher, he is a graduate of... Martin Luther King High School. Uh, Go Crusaders. Uh, And yeah, like you said earlier... It's good to talk to anyone who has perspective like this, but especially from the city uh, like ours. Joining us on the line, Rich Miller Jr. uh, from Detroit has a background here. Also, hopefully uh, has aspirations into the NFL draft. Uh, Welcome, uh, Rich, to Daily Detroit. I appreciate you. No problem. Thanks for having me. I appreciate y'all for, you know, getting me on here. Yeah, of course. It's always good to get people from the hometown on air. I know you started at King, two state championships. Any indelible memories, I guess, outside of the championships from there to now? Man, if we just want to talk about King, it was King was was one of the best times of my life, honestly. The amount of friendships I made, the amount of, you know, countless memories I made in King, you know, the, the amount of growth I had. You know, I was just talking to my girlfriend actually last night about how, you know, high school, like going to King was just like, one of the best things I could ever do, you know what I'm saying? I met some great people. You know, every day in King was was a good day, you know what I'm saying? Like like I said, I think it was I think it was basically just the relationships I made every day. I don't have any specific events that occurred that, you know, was greater than the state championships at King, but I just know like every day, you know, I I always look back on those days and just remember how much fun we had. For sure. And I mean, we have one connection there. KDP, shout out to KDP. She's uh, mm-hmm. was instrumental in making sure that we met to, to get this thing started. So leaving King to go to Buffalo, uh, what did you see at Buffalo that made you decide, like, this is where I want to start off? Honestly, it was so like during the time I, I thought I was a, you know, Big Ten player. I thought I was a ACC or Big Ten player, stuff like that. Like, man, I'm going to go somewhere really big and just start, you know, start my career off. But I did have a few of those offers, but when it came down to it, 
I took a visit to Buffalo and the coaches just, they wanted me so bad and they, they wanted me, they showed me so much love. And I'm the type of person who, who loves, who loves me. You know what I'm saying? I love one who loves me and they showed me so much love. They showed me, you know, they, they told me that's going to give me the opportunity to play as a freshman. They told me, you know, I had a chance to come there and, and, and be one of the guys. They also really, you know, like they didn't just see me as another number. You know, some schools sometimes just see you as another number and, you know, just another player from Detroit or just a good player that sounds good to have on their team. And these guys actually like wanted me like really bad. And I think that's really what took me there. A funny story, actually, when I took my visit there, my dad's car literally like kind of just broke down. We we um drove there through Canada or whatever. And we were still in Buffalo. My dad's car kind of broke down. And he was like, man, I think it's just a sign that we meant to stay here. You know what I'm saying? Like, we supposed to stay here and stuff good is going to happen when we stay here. So that's what we did, man. I made the most of it while I was there. And, you know, I, I appreciate Buffalo for every single thing. I appreciate this coaching staff for everything. I couldn't write it any better, honestly. You know, I couldn't write it. I thought I was going to be a Big Ten football player coming out of high school, but I guess I needed two more years to, you know, develop. So I couldn't write it any better. Uh, the city was a great city to be in. I met some great people. I had a great time, ate some great food, man. So Buffalo was definitely the spot to be around that time. You know, in your travels and in your your game, what do you take from Detroit with you? What are a couple, of, one or two things you learned uh, about, you know, Detroit and being, you know, from here that you take with you? Everyone knows, man. Like, I think us in Detroit is built different. Um, one of the things I definitely took with me is the grit that we all had to grow up with and, uh, like, just that hustle, the hustle that we all had to grow up with, and, you know, being able to not have anything handed to us, you know, so we work in Detroit, you know, we work hard, we work hard for every single thing that we get. Um, nothing was ever handed to any of us. We always had to work harder than those people from the suburbs and get half as far, you know what I'm saying? So I think that was one of the biggest things I took with me and that helped me stand out. All the times I was told no in college, you know what I'm saying? All the times that things weren't going my way. It was, I think being from Detroit and being through what I've been through in Detroit is definitely what helped me push through because like, I understand that you can, you can get anything you want in this world as long as you work for it. And I think a lot of us from Detroit who's played college football or college sports in other areas have always stood out in that way. I think we're a little tougher out of Detroit, like I said, because all the things we've seen and things we go through and, you know, the, the community that we're in, we're a little tougher, you know what I'm saying? So I think, when, like I said, when other guys was, you know, worried about some things or have a little bit of injuries or a little bit of something that hurt, you know, whether it's mentally or physically, you know, they, they tend to like shy away sometimes. And I always noticed that I was always the one who could rise above those things and rise above that adversity that we face and whenever it was because of what I learned in Detroit. So I definitely always give all the credit to Detroit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I wouldn't rather be from anywhere else on this planet. Yeah, so when you think of like players from Detroit, you think of typically gritty players. Like I can think of two Sauce Gardner, Avante Maddox, players who mm-hmm. like talented players, but players who also will play through an injury, will play through uh, strike, yeah. will play through whatever, just to get out there and still put up numbers, which is great. So you talked about thinking you were a Big Ten player, a Big Twelve player, coming out needing two years of season. How great was the feeling when you got to a school like Kansas and then became uh, the star that you became? Before I even got to Kansas, man, I had to hit the portal because my coaches staff left Buffalo. And once they went to Kansas, it was like, I just decided to hit the portal just to see, you know, what I could do. I knew I didn't have that much film, but it really hit me and it felt even better when that same coaching staff was the one who told me, like, we want you to come to Kansas. And that was everything to me because I'm like, these guys never gave up on me. They might've got a new job, but they never gave up on me. They really believed that I could play power five football. And that's all I need from someone. I just need someone to believe that I can do it because like I've proven on every single level that I can do whatever I put my mind to. I can play with the best of them. I can hold my own. So that before I even started playing, you know, big 12 is was the big thing for me. And it's what, I already had confidence, but this what gave me like that confidence boost that someone literally believed in me to be able to play power five ball. When I got there, you know, just because I came with this coaching staff, they weren't just going to hand me anything. Like I said, and Detroit came out of me and he told me like, I'm not just going to start you just because I know you. 
So you got to earn it. You got to earn everything you do. You got to show everyone out here that you deserve to be a starter. You deserve to play. So I didn't even start until um, week four of the 2021 season. And that game, I had 14 tackles. And I believe I had a sack too. So it was literally like, it was, I couldn't write that any better either, man. It felt so good to be able to just not prove anybody wrong per se, but, you know, prove myself right and just show myself that all the work that I have put in, all the faith that I believe in, you know, is all worth it. So, you know, that's what gives me confidence day in and day out. You know, I always believe in myself. I always know that I could do what other people don't think I can do for some reason. But, you know, we still going. So obviously everyone has their dream scenario of being drafted and number one is just being drafted, period. But for you, if you could break yeah. down and have a perfect scenario where you were like, this is what I dreamed, this is what I fell asleep and woke up and it's in front of me, what would it be? It would definitely be to literally just play in the NFL at the highest level. I understand now, you know, being in a process that being drafted is one thing and being drafted is good, you know, for the publicity, for a lot of different things and and like it's a it's a lot more to being drafted. I think if you look at, you know, a lot of the, a lot of players in the NFL who are doing really well, a lot of them were late round or undrafted picks. Um I think I think that's where I'll be I'll be a late round or undrafted pick, so I'm not really tripping on it, but you know, the ultimate dream and goal is to play in the NFL for a lot of seasons and be able to change my family's life. I just want to continue to prove myself prove myself right and you know, give my family new opportunities. I think that dream would literally just be running out on the field, being a starting linebacker on the NFL team. Um, that's when I that's when I probably feel like the dream came true. Um, or even starting on special teams, honestly, just being able to put on a uniform and be a a positive productor on the field, like be able to produce for any NFL team, not just be on the team. Like, I've never been the type to just want to be there just to put a jersey on. Like I want to be one of the guys on the team who everyone respects and everyone you know, looks to for certain answers or, you know, look to to get something done. So that'll probably be it right there. For you being from Detroit, how big of a deal is it that this draft is happening here in the Motor City? Oh, man. Honestly, I've said this twice or about three times already since we've been on. Like, you couldn't write this any better. Everything's come full circle. I feel like it would be great if I was a first round pick getting drafted in Detroit, being from Detroit, literally going to school three minutes from where the draft is, but that's not the plan God has for me. But I think just, just the fact that it's in Detroit just shows me that, you know, it all, everything always works out for me. Everything always, you know, falls in the favor of us. And, you know, as long as I just do what I need to do, everything will work out. Um, it just falls, it's a full circle moment. Cause I don't know, man, you can't write this stuff. You can't write this. So, you know, it's just all, it's right there. It's right there. We can touch it. I don't know, man. It's it's definitely unreal. When you head back to the city, where's the first place you're stopping besides your family's house? Oh, honestly, I was thinking about that earlier. I was thinking about going to uh, Chandler Park Golf Course with my cousin, but I'm not sure. Give me some Coney Island for sure. Which Coney? Gotta go there. Which one? I can't go downtown because it's going to be crazy, so I'm probably not going to go to American or Lafayette. I, would, I mean, Detroit 1 on Woodward, that's probably going to be packed, too. Those are my main ones right there. I could probably go to L. George's on uh, McNichols. Yeah, no, L. L George's would be safe bet during the day. <laughs> for sure, for sure. So is there anything that you'd want to share with people, you know, listening to this? Let's say somebody's in your shoes, but, you know, let's say they're younger. Let's say they're hearing this in their car, they're they're with their parents or whatever. What is something that you would share with somebody coming up behind you about what's key to make it and keep pushing forward? Something I definitely lived by was believe in yourself even when no one else believes in you. Um, and I think that's really important because you have to be able to continue to prove all your doubters wrong. And, you know, just go go through life with love, you know, happiness, you know, do what, do what fulfills you, do what fulfills who you are. And just work harder than everyone, I think. I think that's a big thing that people kind of lose track of nowadays. Everyone wants that overnight success, but that's not really real. You have to really understand that you got to work harder than everyone. Do the things that the average person isn't, isn't willing to do, and you will get to wherever you want to be. 
Well, Rich, I really appreciate your time. And, uh, you know, uh, I hope personally, it's been so good to talk to you. I hope that uh, you get drafted uh, as high as uh, high as possible. And thank you for sharing so much of the, the insight and, and your opinions on this, because I, I just love having a view into somebody who, you know, this has got to be among the most exciting couple of weeks of your life coming up here. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate y'all. And, you know, some parts definitely exciting. Other parts are kind of stressful because, you know, what I'm saying there's a lot of uncertainty, even. Even though I'm talking to teams and teams are interested, you still have no idea where your life's about to be in the next, you know, few months. So that's the thing that kind of sucks. But, you know, just being able to be in this position, you know, there are so many people that want to be in this position. So I'm just grateful every single day. You know, I'm blessed. Uh, and, yeah, I am excited as well. So I appreciate y'all for having me on here and, you know, being able to tell my story. Yeah, like Jared said, we definitely appreciate you having you on. We definitely appreciate KDP. Shouts out to KDP uh, helping hook this up sure. so we can we can get. I have friends who've been drafted before, but like getting someone's actual insight because I never actually stopped to ask them in totality. To get someone's actual insight, feet on the ground is like a great perspective, and even better because there's someone who has an experience that you've kind of lived yourself. So we definitely appreciate that. And we're always rooting for, for sure, everybody bro. from Detroit. Oh yeah, for sure. That's a must. We all <laughs> doing that. That's a must. Y'all see where Kia Jackson just got uh, drafted last night? Yeah. For, I, yeah. Went to, I went to middle school with her. No, that, That's definitely great to see. Oh, again, I, have to, I guess I'll be stopping in the WNBA store to get it, one of those jerseys, too. For sure. For sure. Yeah, the, and WNBA is going to be great to watch. Rich, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for your time, and uh, good luck. We'll be out there rooting for you. Yeah, thank you. Y'all have a great day. Well, Fletcher, we're ending this episode outside of Keyworth after a one nothing Detroit City FC victory over Michigan Stars. A great goal by Maxi Rodriguez with some big plays to make it happen in the final minutes. But I got to say, with, with this whole match, it was tied 0-0 for a very, very long time. And it felt like the first team to lose composure was Michigan Stars. And then just the wheels ended up coming off. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? Because it just seemed like a very even match and then just something snapped with the Stars and Detroit City took advantage. Yeah, they kind of got a little tired. It kind of showed near the end, especially on the goal that got given up. Justin Miram, former MLS star playing for the Michigan Stars, just kind of lost the ball and Stephen Carroll took it and hit a perfect through ball up the middle and Max Rodriguez does what he does and put the ball in the net. But yeah, they kind of broke composure early. Hunter Olsen picked up a yellow card in the 62nd and then near the end, I don't think it was a foul, but it was a dumb action to make. Took down uh, Lay Jope from behind for a second yellow, which then just made things worse. You can play so long with just 10 players, but after a while, you already got some tired legs as is going down a person you can immediately start to tell where the cracks are. And even on the goal that got scored, Maxi was left wide open in the middle because people had to overcompensate for being down a player. Yeah, and the the thing is is that uh, this win is great, and I'm, I'm glad to see it. The fans are really excited about it. I feel like, one, this should have been a bigger victory, and I was a little nervous because with— and, and for context, for listeners who don't know— Elvis Amo did not start. This is a heavily rotated side. Uh, there's some other injuries that we're dealing with. What I worried about is that this offense felt a lot more like last year's offense. And I hope that's not the case when uh, we end up playing Oakland later this week. Yeah, I mean, it was a heavily rotated unit. They had the two players who are hurt, Elvis Amo and Reese Williams. Uh, El- Elvis with a groin injury, Reese with a face injury. So you had Ben Morris and Yazid come in. Ben, you started the season for a little bit, but then lost his spot to Reese because Ben was not pushing the offense forward in a way. And you could even tell tonight's game, all the players for Detroit had green, save for the keeper, and Ben, which the keeper you understand, but your field player not having a green for his numbers is not great. Uh, I'm not going to pass judgment yet because, again, it was heavily rotated with some players who don't normally start getting some minutes. Uh, I will change my opinion if the first 20 minutes against Oakland Roots, uh, they look very tepid. They don't. They look kind of, you know, weird pushing the ball forward. Then I will say, okay, this is worrisome. Until then, though, I'll, I'll wait till I see Ali Coot uh, and his partnership with Maxi in the middle. Yeah, I, I hear you. We're talking about the Open Cup here because there's kind of two seasons in one in soccer for Detroit City FC. With this Open Cup, this means that Detroit City advances, but we do not know who City is going to play yet, but it'll be somebody in the geographic region, depending on who wins. Yeah, in theory, it could be either Indy 11 
or Chicago Fire 2 or Louisville City or anyone that they try to keep pairings as much as they can within the geographic region because they don't while it is exciting to see Detroit go play some small team in Colorado like gas mileage either way is not great for either team especially for the team that's not professional so they want to keep it as close as possible until they can't do that anymore and at that point then it becomes the, the next best thing that you can do so look for someone who's close by with uh, regional roots to, for them to play against. Okay, Oakland is coming in town on Saturday. What are your thoughts? Oakland Roots have one of the best keepers in the league and Paul Blanchett, uh, Paul the Wall. He looks like a cartoon evil villain, very skinny with like a very weird wispy mustache. And he looks awkward as heck. But when you see that when the ball comes in, there's maybe one or two people in this league with better reflexes than him. The game against them last year was a draw because Paul stood on his head and kept Oakland in the game when they had no business being in the game. They have Johnny Rodriguez and Lindo Mfeka who are both Johnny Rodriguez has been with them since Nisa. He's his last game at Keyworth. He scored a goal when they were in Nisa in the championship game that they ended up losing to Detroit. Lindo Mfeka was drafted by the San Jose Earthquakes. Quality player in the middle. He's a straw that kind of stirs the offense. They're a solid team. They're a little bit worse than they were last year and a little bit worse than the year were, were before that. But if they catch you sleeping, they can beat you. If they get up one nothing, getting a ball past Blanchett is going to be almost impossible. When it comes to injuries, do we have any word or insight so far or not yet? Not necessarily. Elvis Amo, it's, I'm sure it's really time. Uh, Reese, he broke his face. So that's it's much more clear cut what happened, but it's like a lot murkier when he's going to come back because it's not just about you know protecting his face, but it's how he feels running and moving. And the face is such a delicate thing. It's kind of wait to when he says, I'm good to go. Well, I'm still getting the smoke out of my lungs because fans were so excited. I mean... The Michigan Stars, is this now a rivalry match? People online will say it's not, but I feel like it. it, that felt like a rivalry match to me, especially with the number of, and I, I gotta say it, Stars fans that showed up in the crowd. Yeah, I wouldn't say it was a rivalry match before the match, but looking over, I mean, most of their fans were like children in youth uniforms and such. But like they had people when the game ended, they had people descend from the stands to clap for the players. And it was a a loud enough people when they did something good. You had audible cheers from the away section, which has usually not really been the case. So they have people there. The game got really chippy, like watching Big Brother and Little Brother play against each other, and I don't mean to assign either of those to one team, but watching siblings fight it out. I won't say that they're siblings, but like maybe second cousins who don't like... I would consider it a rivalry now. I would say that even go as far as say it might be a, a local derby, which I know is going to catch some flack from soccer people in the area. But like these are two teams that generally just don't like each other from top to bottom. And even though the Stars only have one win in the history between them... They've played them tough when they can. And you've seen Detroit, who looked like they were flying, get stuck in the mud. The Stars, who looked like they were kind of falling during the season, perk up a bit. So, yeah, I would consider it a rivalry game now. Look, until, what, 70th, 80th minute in that area, this could have been anyone's match. Let's be honest. Yeah, for sure. It it wasn't until that that second yellow for Hunter Olsen, which got him out of there, which kind of shifted the balance more towards Detroit. Because at that point, it went from Stars trying to make some chances going forward with their massive center back, Sako Konate, 6'6", and he moves like a gazelle, which is insane. It wasn't until late when they had that happen that they had to switch to just, we need to defend, make sure we just don't let a ball go in our net, which for them, unfortunately, they didn't were not able to do uh, as Maxi Rodriguez got a ball past Makruva. So, yeah, I mean, without that second yellow, who knows what could have happened. For sure. Well, Fletcher Sharp, always good to cover another match with you. And, of course, thanks for joining me on this multi-part episode of Daily Detroit. We started at Tech Town and we end on the streets of Hamtramck. Oh, definitely, for sure. It's one of those where, you know, it's it's kind of like Legos. You put pieces together and it becomes this big old spaceship. Well, thank you so much for listening to your Daily Detroit. I hope you enjoyed the journey with us. I am Jer Stays. Do not forget to drop five stars on your favorite podcast app and tell a friend about the show because that is the best way to grow your Daily Detroit. With that, I'm Jer Stays. And I'm Fletcher Sharp. Take care of each other. Remember that you are somebody, and we'll talk tomorrow.